I'm John Fritch, Dean of the College of Humanities, Arts, and Sciences. I'm looking forward to the opening of the Juried Student Art Exhibition. This night is always one of the highlights of the spring semester for me. This year, I'm especially interested in seeing the art our students have made in these unprecedented times. And it is now appropriate for you to take whatever action you vowed to take the next time you heard the phrase unprecedented times. I know that our art students always make amazing art. Each year, you do so in spite of some of the limitations that we face at UNI. Perhaps you desire different equipment, or better equipment, or more space, or better materials, or maybe just less snow. Yet the artists that graduate from UNI continuously produce great professional art. Dana Potter is currently a professor of interactive digital studies at the University of Northern Iowa, and her work here helped her earn a prestigious fellowship at the University of Tennessee. Jake Matternack is a designer for the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Abby Headley is doing incredible work on campus, restoring public art, and seems to become the face of UNI. And there are many other alums doing quite well. But tonight is about our current students. I'm grateful to each of you for the art that you have created this year in these unprecedented times. I can't wait to see it. Good afternoon. My name is Jeff Bird, and I'm the head of the art department here at UNI. And I'd like to welcome you to this year's annual juried student exhibition. Normally, we would all be gathered together in the Camerick Art Building and in the Gallery of Art to look at some amazing work done by our students here in the Department of Art. But like so many things, this year is a little different. The exhibition is virtual, and it will be available after you watch this recording. But for now, we need to give out some awards to some well-deserving students. Some of the students have provided videos for us to watch where they're going to tell us a little bit about the pieces and how they've done them. The juror for this year's student show was Heather Skeens. Heather is the cultural coordinator for the city of Cedar Falls and runs the Hearst Center for the Arts. Heather selected several students to receive honorable mention awards for this year's exhibition. They are Maddie Smith for her sketchbook performance, Barbara Lynch for Ichabod and Clarence. Isabella Duccini for the big frog that makes all the rules. And Amelia Gotera for Milk Bath 2. The UNI Art Incubator Award goes to Jazz Jensen, Sewing and Hiding the Real Me. Hello, my name is Jazz Jensen. I'm a freshman here at UNI, and I am studying art education. This is my art piece called Sewing and Hiding the Real Me. Let's get more into the process of this skirt. So, the skirt is a cyanotyped dyed fabric. It is 100% cotton that was dyed in a dark room and then dried for a day. Next, I printed negatives of photos of me in cosplay and then they were laid on top to expose in the sun. And then you go inside, rinse them, let them dry. I sewed together the pieces and then pleated it all and finally added a zipper and sewed it together with a waistband to make this beautiful skirt. Here's a closer look at the negatives that I used. Each photo was uploaded to Photoshop. I turned them black and white and then inverted the images to get these photos used here. 
Each photo was printed as a 2x3 on transparent paper to make the transfer process a lot easier. Each image was held down by a pane of glass so it didn't fly away from me while transferring. From dyeing the fabric to dry time to printing, more drying time, sewing, and cleanup, this project took me about 15 hours to complete. This year, there were two Graphic Design Fund Awards. The first goes to Peyton Kelly. The second goes to Rebecca Nielsen. This next award is sponsored by the Friends of the Permanent Art Collection and Gallery. This year, they've awarded two prizes. The first goes to Jessica Vasquez for Essential. Hello, I'm Jessica Vasquez. I'm a junior here at the University of Northern Iowa, majoring in BFA painting, art education, and minor in Spanish. So my piece essential was created when COVID first started. It was a very weird time for many of us. And it was also the time when you and I students just got, you know, sent home because of everything that was going on. So with being sent home, I needed to learn how to use the materials that were already there. So I used pre-made canvases because I didn't have a studio to make any. I used newspapers that came in from the mail and I used acrylic paints that have been stored in my closet for I don't know how long. But even though it was a very hard environmental switch, I can say that I definitely made it work. This piece pretty much expresses how I felt during the beginning of COVID and I used a lot of symbolism to do so. During this time, I just felt very isolated at home because all I did was watch endless TV and I ate all the time. The collage food on the floor symbolizes how much I was eating and I just couldn't help it because all the things I used to do weren't an option anymore. Um, I also feared going outside at all. The toilet paper in the closet also represents the need for toilet paper and how lucky you were if you even had any because you just could never find them in stores, like at all. <laughs> on top of that, I also focused on individuals who were out during this time and those are essential workers. While this whole crisis was going on, essential workers didn't have a choice. They either went to work or they lost their jobs. And I know this because my parents are essential workers and I constantly feared for their health. Essential workers need to be thanked and they need way much more recognition because they kept us going during these hard times. Many of the businesses I painted outside of the door are also fast food chains, which we really relied on for food for quite a while. But to our more specific, Osceola Foods and DHL, which are the factories my parents have been working at for years and through all of COVID. Lastly, shoes hanging from the telephone wire have represented so many things growing up. But in this specific painting, it is a timestamp for this insane event we are still fighting through. The next award goes to Kagda Tamang for identity. Hello, I'm Kagda Tamang. I'm a former Bodhnish refugee. I spent 19 years in the refugee camp, which is located in the eastern part of Morang, Nepal. Currently, I have been living in the United States for seven years. My major is studio paintings. My paintings are related to myself. Since I was born in a refugee camp, I struggled to find my identity. I have had several roles while I was searching for examples. Who am I? What role did I play in my families or community? I always felt I was not very welcome in any roles. So I felt lost. Unfortunately, the identity crisis is a huge disaster and everyone struggles in finding their identity. For this piece, the main component of medium I choose is rice. I have been evidence of hunger and starvation while I was in the refugee camp. So rice play a major role while I was searching for my identity. While talking about the process, I toasted rice till it was burned. Different toasting duration changed the color. I picked the three stages of colors, white, brown, and black, as black as coal. Coal represents the death of anything that once had a life. I feel that I'm in the long-term process of toasting my life with these postmodern communities.
This year's Guillaume Award goes to Cami Lilly. Hello, University of Northern Iowa and art students and art professors. It is so nice to meet with you virtually. My name is Jacqueline and my father and mother were Harry and Rita Guillaume. And uh, they, were, they were dreamers. They were both dreamers, my dad particularly. Um, 30 years ago when he passed, my sister Darlene and I and mom wanted to remember him somehow. And so that was the birth of the Guillaume um, uh, Award. And this award we called, we called it the Dream, Dad's Dream Award. And truly, I think it still is after 30 years. Um, it was a pleasure to read all the applications. And I just, just uh, you're all wonderful. Uh, keep up the hard work and do your art because it's terrific. One person um, we felt exemplified perfectly the spirit of this award. And so for this year, Cami Lilly, we congratulate you on your selection. And I just so wish I could see the evolution of your project. Um, it, it's, it, it's so wonderful. My father, if he were here, he would, be, he would be knocking on your door and say, do you need any help? He loved to work with wood. He, anything with wood, he loved. And um, so I think uh, another person who was very, very taken with your application was my son, Paul, Paul Keelan. He lives in, in LA and he is an actor and he had some Pretty nice words, and I'd like to just read those words to you. Um, he said, I'm drawn to Cammie's artistry. I love that she is creating a space that will be used for so many different purposes, performances, videos, and installations. I love the permanence of the structure that will be built to house all these creations. She seems to me to be a healer, using her artistry to heal and share and be of service to others through sharing her art. I am also drawn to her vulnerability and bravery in exploring the fragility of her family structure and the impact it has had on her. So bravo, Cami, and see you sometime, I hope. Thank you. These next awards are sponsored by the UNI Department of Art. The first award goes to Ezra Solheim for Family Caricature. Hello, my name is Ezra Solheim. I am a freshman here at UNI, and I am an art studio major. Um, I'm very honored to be a part of the annual juried student exhibition this year, and I am even more honored to be able to share one of my art pieces with you today. Um, so yeah, here is that piece. Uh, probably won't be able to see it too well. You can kind of see it. You get the idea. Um, it is called Family Caricature, and it is a caricature of a family. <laughs> so pretty self-explanatory there. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the caricature, it is basically a portrait only this, the subjects of the portrait, the people, uh, their uh, elements of their faces are exaggerated uh, to, I don't know, sort of, it's usually meant for like a kind of a comedic purpose. Sometimes it can be a little grotesque. Um, you'll see a lot of politicians nowadays have uh, caricatures and it's usually just to poke fun, mostly. So um, yeah, it's just pretty fun way of uh, creating a portrait. Uh, a likeness, uh, if you will. So, um, yeah, anywho, I actually made this caricature for my girlfriend and her family uh, This as a gift this past New Year's. Um, this specific uh, caricature took over 40 hours to complete, I think. Yeah, about that time. It's pretty long. Um, it is completely digital, di digital also. Uh, I just used my iPad um, and this neat little app called Procreate. 
which is just like an art app, essentially. So, uh, yeah, to be honest, uh, the whole process of making this was not anything too spectacular uh, or out of the ordinary for a drawing. Uh, the steps include gathering references, creating sketches, finalizing those sketches, uh, adding color, shading, uh, little details, those kind of things. It's nothing too grand, to be honest. Uh, probably the most important step, though, is the beginning. Uh, gathering, re you know, references and establishing, like, the, what will be exaggerated is, like, very, very crucial. Um, so you could, like, I don't know. For this instance, uh, you'll see I mainly exaggerated, uh, uh, I guess, like, the form of the face, uh, the smiles, you know, there's very specific elements uh, just in each face, really, that when exaggerated can produce almost a better likeness than uh, if it wasn't exaggerated. So, uh, yeah, it's usually just really lighthearted, kind of fun. Um, but yeah, that is my family caricature. So, thank you for listening. The next award goes to Aaron Shaver for every year's conviviality. Hello, my name is Aaron Shaver, and I'm in the BFA program for painting at UNI. And for the juried student exhibition, uh, my still life painting uh, is called Every Year's Conviviality. Uh, this painting was accepted into the show and so I'm going to say a few things about the piece. Um, and so starting off with what was the process of, of this painting. Um, the first thing was to set up the still life. All of the objects that you see in the painting were set up and painted from life. This specific painting is the fourth in a series that I had started um, last semester. And this is one of the more complex still lives that I had began to build toward. And my initial idea for this still life was to um, build up some sort of a, a landscape, but I wanted it to be festive as it was around uh, the holidays and winter break. And so I used um, these miniature gift uh, boxes, these really iridescent, shiny boxes, and I use these ribbon bows too. I use shiny, colorful objects because I'm interested in the way that light plays with these different objects. I really enjoy getting close up to the items. I like to go up to the surfaces and really look at the surface and into the surface uh, to be able to sort of understand and it's almost like each each item has its own way to tell a story based off of how these um, interactions with light and color happen um, and this could lead the viewer to believe that there's something truly happening within the still life um, and that it's not just sitting still and so this is what I I strive to do when I uh, set up a still life I would like to thank the juror uh, for the opportunity to um, showcase my piece in the exhibition and for the opportunity to win an award. Thank you. And finally, the next award goes to Ryan Jones for Reaganomics. Hi, my name is Ryan Jones. I am the artist behind Reaganomics, one of the pieces that was selected for the jury show. Um, I am a senior at the University of Northern Iowa in art education. I'm planning on doing my student teaching next fall up in the um, Twin Cities, Minnesota area. I'm very excited. I'm super happy that this piece got in. Actually, this is definitely one of the favorite works that I've done at my time at UNI as an undergrad. Um, I love printmaking, it's my emphasis. I love, love silkscreen. I love the kind of imagery you can get with it. I love the varying um, like degrees, whether I want it to be really detailed or whether I want it to be a little bit more abstract. I love that I can achieve a wide range of imagery using silkscreen, which is the main process for the piece that was selected. There is a lot of collage elements in it as well. I love gluing things to other things and seeing what happens. 
Um, there's a ton of collage, there's a ton of silk screen. There is a little bit of acrylic in it, in terms of, um, I did use some for the background, which is kind of obscured by the big, everything else <laughs> is acrylic paint. But my predominant method of working is silk screen. Um, a lot of the like ideas I was having as I was making the work comes out of this really, like really big want and desire to see more queer history, queer iconography, um, more present and mainstream. And I think especially as the queer movement has kind of come out of the 60s, 70s, 80s ideas of like liberation and kind of more into assimilation by mainstream culture, um, I really want to bring it back to that big idea of like these people are the reason why I'm here today. These people are the reason why, you know, I'm not in some god awful mental institution and I get to live with my fiance and have a happy life. Um, I think it is really important to bring attention to the history, the people, the stories, the people that tried to oppress queer people, um, which is why Ronald Reagan is a very prominent figure in the work. And then throughout the background, there are other people, um, people that were coming out of the ball culture in New York, Tammy Faye is one of my personal idols as well as I think one of um, a very interesting uh, queer icon that I love to talk about and use her a lot in my work. There's a ton of Andy Warhol stars, Candy Darling, Jackie Curtis, all these other really important queer people that kind of gave rise and created space for the queer icons that we currently enjoy in 2021. The final award is from the UNI Office of the Vice President and Provost and it goes to Brianna Pruitt for self-portrait. Hey there, this is Brianna Pruitt speaking. Uh, I'm a studio art major with sculpture emphasis, hopefully graduating this semester. Um, I like painting too, obviously. <laughs> um, and for this piece, um, it was from a class prompt. You can do, it says do self portrait. This is my self portrait, but I've never really done a self portrait where I actually have to look at myself. So that was a new challenge since I kind of have problems digesting what I look like. Um, especially when I was in the headspace creating this, I was I just couldn't connect with what I looked like. So I really had to go down to the basic shapes of the face. I couldn't, it was all down to basic shapes and color. And that's all I could go off of. I can't tell if this looks like me or not. You know, I'm wearing the same shirt today, but I, I, it feels like me though. <laughs> In that moment, I've, a lot of stuff's happened since I did this piece, but. <laughs> I don't know, I've kind, of, I've kind of come out of this headspace, but I'm very thankful for coming from this headspace and how much time COVID has given me to self-reflect and think about like, who am I? <laughs> the ultimate artist question, who am I? Um, yeah, and I use the mask on this piece to kind of at a second canvas that I could kind of break free from the pattern I was using underneath on the face. So, and then I got to play with the lighting and like bring out some blue over here. Use that blue lighting over there. Uh, I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is my self portrait. And I'm glad y'all enjoyed it. <laughs> And I'm excited to make more. I encourage all artists to make some form of a self-portrait. Just every once in a while. Just a way to check in with yourself and your creative side. Like, what's going on up there? Sometimes we need that little bit of extra time and energy just for us. <laughs> That's what I hope people take away from COVID is you can't always rely on other people to fuel all your needs. You need to have a piece of yourself too that you can hang on to and nourish whatever whatever part of you that may be and in whatever form <laughs> that turns into whether it's oil painting self-portrait 
or scribbles in a sketchbook. I do a lot of those too. Anyway, thanks for listening. <laughs> Have good days. <laughs> thanks again for joining us for tonight's award ceremony. I hope that you'll take some time and look at all of the works that are in the digital exhibition that's available now. We look forward to seeing you in person and in the gallery next year.